Hello again. My name is uh, Holger Beer, and um, today uh, we are talking about the garage door operator Base Plus Proplos. We want to give you some uh, information uh, about this uh, uh, operator, about this generation. So uh, let's start start with a preface. Um, here we we can, as you can see, this is the performance um, as a ceiling motor. So we have here the the galvanized uh, track uh, over here. Uh, we got a tension single way chain, uh, which is wear and maintenance uh, free. Uh, we have a traveling motor. So here in the housing, there is a built in motor, which is traveling around uh, the track, uh, around uh, along the chain. And on the back side, we have a control unit housing uh, where the transformer and the small PCB uh, is placed. Uh, by the way, through this uh, uh, chain system uh, we use, uh, we have a low noise. It's uh, less than uh, five, uh, 59 dBA, so quite, quite, uh, very quiet uh, system. Um, it's suitable for the following uh, door types. Um, uh, of course, sectional door, what you got nowadays, nowadays very often when you uh, build a new house, uh, it's pretty common. Um, then retractable door, there are still a lot of uh, doors on the market. Uh, a canopy door uh, can be also operated by this operator or a side hinge door uh, is also possible or a side opening sectional door uh, would be possible to operate as well. Uh, please just uh, think about there will be for some doors uh, separate uh, fixtures necessary. Uh, like, for example, for a canopy, canopy a door, you will need a curved arm uh, to operate uh, this uh, door uh, correctly. So let's uh, come to the difference uh, uh, for Base Plus Pro Plus. What's the difference? Uh, the production series Base Plus, uh, you've got the control unit housing plugged at the end of the rail, as you can see uh, over here. Uh, it's similar, uh, let's say, to the Marathon, to the Sprint uh, operator, what you maybe uh, know. And uh, over here, we got the Series Pro Plus. Now we've got a separate housing. There are already push buttons uh, integrated on the front. And it's similar to the Duo Vision, what you maybe know, uh, operator. So you could uh, uh, fix this on the wall, uh, wherever you got a socket. Um, but it's also possible to... Uh, uh, mounted on the ceiling, of course, if you got a socket uh, over there. And there is a, a 24 volt uh, cable uh, going out here from the control unit to the uh, operator. Um, and uh, this is uh, uh, controlling the motor with 24 volt uh, DC. Um, the packaging uh, is now uh, complete uh, the, uh, in, in one packaging, um, so it's uh, including one transmitter already in the packaging. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have also the additional, the screws, everything what you need for uh, fix. The operator, it's uh, pre-mounted as much as possible, so the motor is already uh, mounted in the C-Track uh, inside. Uh, the size uh, of the... Um, of the packaging is, uh, uh, as you can see here, uh, optimized for a Euro uh, pallet, so it will fit on a Euro pallet. This is uh, good for transportation. It's uh, saving costs also in your stock. And the weight is approximately uh, 13 kilograms uh, per package, so easy to handle. It's not uh, too heavy. Uh, and we have on uh, a label on the side of the package uh, where you can easily see all the important data. So you can see the serial number of the operator, you can see the item number, and you can see which version it is. So for example, the triangle uh, shows you 600 Newton. So that's the, the small motor. Uh, the next stronger one is uh, marked with a circle. It's 800 uh, Newton. And the next uh, one, or the biggest one, the strongest one we've got uh, in our product range is 1,100 Newton. So that's the big uh, motor, uh, the strong motor for uh, huge garages, for example, uh, double garage for two cars. 
um, yeah, it depends on the size and uh, on the weight of your door, which uh, operator you have to, to choose. Um, uh, what's all in the box? So the carton uh, contains uh, uh, the control unit. So uh, depending if you have the base plus, uh, uh, it's like uh, this housing, uh, or if you have the pro plus, it's the separate one uh, housing. Um, the carriage is uh, pre-installed at the rail already. The, the chain uh, is already uh, installed. And we have two uh, track joints uh, over here, and we have totally three tracks. Uh, in one, the motor is already built in. And um, you can see, of course, uh, uh, assembly uh, kit is uh, um, included. So there are all the, the screws, what you need for, for fitting the operator into your garage, uh, the material for the mounting, uh, the brackets, uh, everything, uh, the push arm uh, is as well um, included. Of course, uh, um, assembly uh, uh, instruction is included. Please have a look uh, before you start to uh, mount the operator into uh, this. Uh, it will maybe uh, uh, save you uh, some time later on uh, when you're installing. You got a, a lot of uh, tips for installation uh, inside, so it could be useful. And there is one transmitter uh, which is already included and uh, which is pre-programmed. So the first push button is already coded in into the radio system. So you can uh, directly uh, operate uh, here, the operator with this transmitter. Uh, let's come to the assembly. It's uh, pretty easy. It's just a, a few steps um, or we will show you today. So um, uh, because it's uh, pre-mounted, um, uh, we, we uh, pre-mount so much uh, or as much as possible here in the production. Uh, there are just a few steps uh, necessary what you have to do on site. So you have to uh, uh, click on the connectors uh, to the track, one on the left, one on the right side. Uh, they are similar, by the way. Uh, then you uh, connect additional uh, rails uh, to the system uh, till you hear a click, till, till the end position. And then next step is you could con uh, plug in the control housing um, on the end uh, side. And the next step would be you have the chain. Uh, you turn the chain uh, 90 degree around, and it's possible to uh, hang up, to connect it uh, in the, into the connector. You turn it 90 degree back, and then it's uh, already uh, fixed. Next step is uh, you need a 10 mil nut and uh, with a wrench, you could uh, tension the chain. So uh, there is an arrow uh, showing you uh, how much uh, you need to, to tension uh, uh, the chain. Um, please uh, tension uh, to, to till you reach uh, this uh, mark, this arrow on the, on the, um, uh, on the uh, input over here. And the next step uh, would be uh, to connect the, the brackets uh, with a screw. So this is uh, where you mount uh, the operator to your garage uh, itself. And uh, then uh, just slide on um, uh, your uh, ceiling uh, bracket uh, as shown here. Uh, so it's uh, designed of two, two parts. You can just slide them on and uh, fix the, the bracket uh, with the nuts for uh, later uh, installation on the, the ceiling of the operator. So this, this is on the back side uh, of the operator uh, to fix it uh, on the ceiling. And this one is uh, on the front. Uh, so this you will mount in the front uh, of your garage. OK, so that's uh, so far to the um, uh, installation of the operator or, or the mounting uh, of the operator itself. Uh, let's come uh, next point to the carriage. So uh, carriage um, is like this. Um, it's a new design, a new development uh, of Sommer. We have the motor uh, over here. And as you can see, there is a PCB uh, directly uh, mounted uh, on the motor. And uh, this is uh, designed like this because the, the functions can be uh, retrofitted. 
we have a, a LED uh, illumination at carriage uh, directly, so there are LEDs uh, soldered on. And uh, this helps us uh, to have a direct and fast exactly uh, processing of all data and measurement uh, parameter uh, because the components are um, next to each other. And uh, this is a good uh, communication uh, yeah, for, for the PCB. Um, let's come to the PCB in, in detail. Uh, so, uh, what's all on the PCB? Uh, we got a double hall sensor at motor. Uh, you can see this over here. Um, this is uh, uh, on the end of and it's uh, reaching uh, uh, into the motor and it serves the pass measurement. Uh, so, approximately uh, three uh, pulses per millimeter. So, that's very, very um, exact. Uh, so, the PCB knows uh, all all the time where is uh, the motor in which position. Uh, it also allows the uh, free positioning of the end position door close. So uh, we're measuring the, the track, uh, how long it's uh, driving till the uh, position close. Uh, a force process um, and positions are at any time known of the PCB because of this uh, hall sensor. And uh, also any changes of the position uh, will be recognized, for example. So if, if there is a temp break in, somebody tries to uh, get in your garage um, and the uh, PCB knows the motor is not running but it's moved, uh, it will be realized uh, through the sensor and then the motor starts to um, close the door again. So uh, there is no chance to, to break in. Um, there is a radio uh, um, a system already integrated with uh, SOMLOG2 um, uh, system, which is 128-bit uh, uh, encryption. Uh, the system before had 66-bit, so it's much more uh, longer uh, code, more safe. And also there are four channel channels uh, available now. Um, you can see over here uh, LEDs. Uh, so channel one is uh, pulse mode, just for open, stop, close uh, the operator. Uh, the channel two is for partitional opening, or you could switch the illumination uh, on and off uh, via radio if you like to. And the channel three is for definite uh, open uh, door open. So the operator just uh, runs into open position. And um, channel four is for definite door close direction, so it always will uh, run into door close direction. One example, uh, when, when to use this, you could, if you have two garages, for example, you could code into channel four, one push button of two operators, and in the evening you just press this uh, push button and uh, you will be sure the door uh, will be closed. So if one is open, it will close. The other one, uh, uh, if it's already closed, it will stay closed. And uh, yeah, you get a feedback from the flashing LEDs over here uh, when you code in uh, the transmitter so you see on which channel you are and if the coding was uh, successful. Uh, by the way, the transmitter buttons, um, what you've got mostly, our transmitter got four push buttons. You are freely to uh, program uh, them so you can uh, take whatever, uh, you can choose whatever push button you like to have. Uh, sometimes uh, you got a sliding uh, door uh, operator on the entrance, so you want to have the first push button for this one and the second one for the garage, uh, so you can change this um, like you uh, need it. Okay, uh, let's come to the next uh, step. Uh, there is a motor uh, brake uh, um, included here. There is a resistor uh, over here on the PCB and it's uh, monitoring the uh, engine speed. Uh, at any time it's running. And if the speed is uh, exceeded, the motor brakes uh, activi actively using the braking resistor. So uh, this is working automatically if the door is, is pulling the motor, for example, into door close, uh, automatically uh, it will uh, brake here to don't get uh, too fast uh, into uh, door close direction. So this is uh, itself controlling uh, just for information. You don't need to set anything. Um, yeah, this is um, self-running. 
Um, next is there are uh, four DIP switches on, uh, on integrated onto the PCB. Uh, so what's possible uh, to set with these DIP switches? We got a small table over here. So you need to know factory setting. Uh, they are all set to off because it's uh, uh, functions you need to set uh, on site. So uh, number one is for automatic uh, closing. So if you want to have automatic uh, closing here, you need to activate uh, DIP number one. Uh, but please uh, remember for automatic closing there is a, a photo cell uh, required so you need to connect a, a photo cell as well when you want to have uh, this function. Uh, the second one is like this in standard you can uh, switch the illumination via remote uh, on and off like you wish if you have a side sectional door for example. Um, then I think partitional opening uh, makes sense so you could uh, learn for example half a meter uh, to entrance like a, for like a pedestrian and you don't need to, to open uh, the door fully so you could operate this with your remote control uh, with channel 2. Um, number 3 and 4 uh, as you can see if it's off it's for sectional door uh, set it. This is the most uh, common door now today. But please, please, if you've got a, a side opening sectional door or if you've got a retractable door, set number four or three to on. Uh, you tell the operator what kind of door is mounted and uh, some parameters like the speed, uh, like the soft run uh, is adapted to this kind of door and your door will run uh, more smoothly um, yeah, we'll, we'll just run better. So please uh, uh, remember setting DIP 3 and 4 for the right kind of door uh, you got on site. Okay, the next uh, step, uh, the next point we got uh, over here is the reset button. It's the green push button uh, over here on the PCB and you can see we have um, a special um, uh, step reset by time. So if you push it one to two seconds, there is a reset of the safety devices. So safety devices could be photo cell, could be uh, a safety edge, what's connected. So uh, if you connect uh, directly when you install uh, a photo cell, it will be realized. But if you um, finish the, the teaching process already and uh, later on uh, the customer want to have a photo cell, you need to do this reset reset to um, tell the operator now is a um, photo cell connected and it will uh, ask for and it will realize it. After five seconds uh, force values will be deleted so um, all, all the force what's uh, uh, um, learned inside uh, the memory will be deleted and you can teach in this new after 10 seconds the end position door close will be deleted. So you can uh, teach in uh, a new uh, track, a new yeah, uh, running time. And after 50, 15 uh, seconds, you got a reset done. And just after 13 uh, seconds, you have a full reset to factory settings. Uh, this is in software uh, 3.6. Uh, so this is uh, October 2017. Um, there you uh, connected then all uh, parameters even if you uh, change something with uh, some link. Um, I will let you know later on uh, for those who don't know maybe what's the some link. Uh, uh, so for this some link tool um, uh, the settings uh, will be cancelled as well. Uh, by the way you get a feedback uh, from a, a green flashing uh, LED over here. Uh, it will flash in, in different uh, 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 frequencies so you see it if it's flashing one time, three times, four times uh, which uh, reset part you are. Also you can count uh, the seconds roughly and uh, so you are able uh, not to do a factory reset if you just want to uh, do the force, uh, if you just want to cancel the force values for example. Okay so that's uh, to the, the reset button which is uh, on the carriage uh, PCB. Um, next step is we got some terminals over here. You can see uh, on the first uh, two terminals uh, it's like this, uh, a wicket uh, switch terminal can be uh, connected. Um, it's a normally closed contact. Uh, it's uh, 12 volt uh, DC, 10 uh, milliamps, so also read contacts. 
uh, can be connected over here. Uh, it's suitable uh, also for the new SOMAR uh, test, testing uh, wicket door switch from SOMAR. So this is a new developed uh, product which is uh, self-tested. So if there is uh, on the cable any uh, short circuit or the cable is interrupted, it will be immediately realized by the PCB and uh, it won't uh, uh, let you uh, operate door. So it's pretty safe. Uh, then you know something is wrong and you have to uh, repair it or exchange it. Also, um, what's good on this system, because it's directly uh, connected on the carriage, no spiral cable is uh, required because the motor is running with the door along, so the cable length uh, won't change. It's, it's always the same length. Uh, from your wicket door uh, to the carriage uh, of the motor. Um, also, especially for collective uh, garage, um, uh, it's uh, good to uh, connect a safety edge uh, additional uh, to the door. This could be an optical one or could be an electrical one. Uh, so both is possible. You can see over here, uh, it's also mostly on the PCB written uh, in detail uh, where to connect uh, which uh, cable. Uh, if not, uh, have a look in the manual. There is also very clearly written which color you need to connect. And this will be detected uh, also automatically uh, while commissioning the operator, so when you install it uh, directly. Okay, but there is much more connections, much more possibilities uh, to connect on the operator. Um, some useful tools like, uh, for example, the laser. It's a parking a position laser. So, so this is uh, mounted on the push arm. It's just plug and play. Uh, you connect it and then you connect it over here on the PCB and it's always automatically uh, activated when the door opens. So you uh, could adjust it that you got um, uh, your point, the laser point, uh, exactly on the dashboard. Uh, on a position you know, and then uh, you know how deep uh, you drive into your garage till the door fully uh, closes without uh, uh, touching your car and uh, you have uh, enough space left in front uh, for some other stuff like bicycles uh, or whatever you, you store in your garage. So it could be help, helpful uh, yeah, to show you your exactly park position. You got always the same park position. Um, but what's also uh, very useful, I think, is the motion, especially if you got a separate door. You know, uh, mostly uh, in the garage it's pretty dark, especially when the main door is closed. So if you enter your garage, um, uh, this detector will uh, realize you and automatically uh, switch on the light and uh, don't operate the operator. So it just switches on the light that you are not in the dark. And also after a certain time, um, I think factory setting is three minutes, it will also switch off uh, the light. So uh, you don't need to care about uh, switch on or off uh, the light. It will work um, automatically. Also, this is just plug and play. So you connect it over here, connect the sensor on the push arm. Uh, there are no screws or, or anything. So this is uh, pretty uh, fast uh, installed and uh, working uh, immediately. Uh, for safety uh, reasons, uh, it could be helpful to uh, use our buzzer. This is uh, alarm or warning buzzer. So as you can see here, uh, it uh, could be uh, when the door is closing, uh, giving alarm because this is the most dangerous uh, direction into door close. Uh, uh, warn you, uh, be careful, door is closing now. Uh, but also if somebody try to break in uh, your garage, so it moves the operator, the whole sensor will realize there is a movement and then there will be alarm. Um, what's also useful maybe for uh, car uh, garages for repair, uh, garages if they have a, a wicket door. If you open the door, there will be a noise like a beep beep uh, to know, okay, customer is coming now. So um, yeah, just for information or um, yeah, let you know uh, somebody used the door. It's also plug and play. You see on the PCB there is written buzzer. 
Uh, the terminal is black, by the way. Here, uh, from the laser, it's white. So uh, nothing uh, you could mix up. Um, uh, it's uh, also plug and play. And it's pretty loud, by the way. It's around about 110 dBA. So uh, yeah, <laughs> will be uh, uh, loud enough uh, to hear it. Um, next is you could uh, plug here uh, the sensor on. On this position, this is a humidity sensor, and it's uh, carrying about the humidity in your garage. It's automatic ventilation of your garage. So especially in winter time, when you uh, got a lot of snow, for example, or uh, the car is wet, uh, and you drive into your garage, you have a lot of humidity. The sensor will realize it. We'll just open the first panel a little bit. We'll open some centimeters uh, on, on the bottom and uh, this will cause um, um, a ventilation so the cold air can get into your garage and the wet uh, hot air can go out of the garage and uh, this is also plug and play so um, this will work automatically after two hours it will close it uh, mostly the factory uh, settings are fine um, but if you wish with some link uh, it's also possible to set a lot of uh, parameters here to adjust it uh, yeah, to your garage or to your requirements, uh, what you got uh, on site. More safety uh, is the lock. Uh, you need to know our operators are self-locking, so the motor uh, is, is locking. We got a, a gear um, and a shaft there, so uh, you can't uh, uh, oper open the, um, the system by hand when it's locked uh, with uh, motor itself, but additional, if you want to have additional or mechanical locking, uh, you could use this lock. It's also plug and play. You connect it over here and it will block the motor in any position. So always when the motor is not driving, it could be somewhere between, could be in the end position open, stop always when it's not driving uh, this uh, lock. Uh, locks the motor uh, additional and uh, gives you uh, up to 3,000 Newton uh, blocking force, and this is also uh, certificated. Um, next is uh, the MEMO. You could plug it uh, onto this position. You need to know uh, in the standard uh, the MEMO was on. Uh, the space is for 40 transmitter. That's the maximum. Uh, this should be uh, for standard uh, garage more than enough, but uh, think about uh, collective garages. In collective garages, <coughs> maybe you, you have more uh, spaces uh, and you need more transmitters, so you could just uh, plug on the memo and you reach up to 450 radio commands or transmitter what you could um, code in. Uh, remember, every push button uh, you, you code in uh, will need one space, so one memory space. It's also plug and play, um, so no settings necessary. Um, maybe important uh, to know for the service uh, area, if you um, have more memory, more transmitter um, coded in, and there is uh, a problem with a motor, and you need to exchange the whole carry, carriage, uh, you could just plug on the memo, wait one minute, uh, all the transmitters will be copied uh, from the internal uh, memory to the memo, and after one minute you just uh, plug it off, plug it to the new carriage, and all your radio uh, systems, so this could be fingerprint, could be telecode uh, transmitter, um, whatever uh, works with the, the radio, uh, some log two. Uh, will work immediately on the new system. So you don't need to collect all the transmitter, what sometimes, uh, yeah, pretty difficult, uh, you know, not so easy. So this could help you. Uh, by the way, if you are doing a lot of with collective garages, uh, please ask for the Codemaster Plus. This uh, will help you to manage, manage uh, the transmitter in a very easy way. Um, yeah, the next uh, connection or we got is the USART uh, connection over here on the PCB. Uh, that's the uh, interface uh, for flexible data transferring into both directions. So you could 
uh, give signals to the operator like uh, start signal, uh, open the garage, or you could get information out is the door uh, into the end position open or in the end position closed. Uh, for example, home link, I think everybody knows home link. Um, a lot of uh, cars uh, got it um, already built in, so uh, there will be soon a home link module available. You can plug and play. You can just uh, connect it over here and then you could uh, code in your um, home link system from the car to operate uh, the operator, uh, you don't need uh, to have the transmitter additional uh, or a delta door uh, module is possible uh, to connect over here. That's also a kind of smart home uh, system where you could uh, uh, connect your um, uh, yeah your uh, your operator into this uh, smart home system. Um, the carriage is made up of two parts. Uh, you need to know um, uh, there are uh, uh, with one screw, if you remove this screw, uh, it's very easy uh, to remove the carriage from the C-Track. So you don't need to um, uh, demount uh, the C-Track. You could easily change the carriage. This is pretty helpful for collective carriage uh, when you uh, have to uh, change the carriage after some years because it's worn out. Uh, it's pretty uh, fast done, saves you time, and uh, so it saves you uh, at least money. Okay, um, now we come to a small summary of the carriage, and I would like uh, to ask my colleague Stefan, could you please uh, do the summary? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you, Holger. What have we seen uh, till now? Uh, Holger told about the double hall sensor at the carriage. With the hall sensor, we can uh, measure the speed and distance uh, for the operator. So uh, the control unit knows well where the operator is and what he's doing. So it's uh, pretty uh, good for us. And then we have an integrated uh, radio, four channel radio. <coughs> with this radio system, we can, of course, operate uh, the garage door opener and we can uh, switch on the light <coughs> if we want and we have uh, different modes we can uh, use for this. Then we have a built-in uh, motor brake. The motor brake uh, breaks the door when the door is heavy and the door is uh, beginning to pulling uh, the motor. So even if you have a heavy, a heavy door, uh, the closing of the door is uh, smooth and quiet. Then we have uh, dip, dip switches, uh, four of them. With these dip switches you can easily uh, switch on the automatic closing, for example, or uh, the partial opening. And if you have a door with not a sectional door, you should uh, switch on this for the retractable door or for the side sectional door. So uh, some parameters uh, will switch and we have uh, the optima optimal uh, parameters for these uh, doors as well. Then we have a reset button. The button is not only for a, um, for a, or to say it in another way, it's for it's a complex uh, reset we can do in, in different steps. We can just uh, reset the security stuff with installed, maybe afterwards. We can do a reset for the distance or for the forces uh, separate. So you uh, do not need to make a complete uh, reset if you don't uh, need. So you can do this in uh, small steps and you can reset that what you want and not at all if you don't need it. Then uh, have we a terminal at the carriage. At the terminal, you can use a wicket door switch. <coughs> you can use uh, the special wicket door switch from Summer, which is uh, specially tested. Or you can use another wicket door switch, maybe one who is built in, in the door. You can use um, built-in switch switches or the other one you install afterwards. Then you can uh, you can directly connect safety edges to the carriage, 
And uh, the big advantage is uh, the same as for the wicker door switch that you don't need a spiral cable to go from the door to the control unit. You just have a short ways to the carriage and there you can connect the safety edge like optical one or uh, electrical one. The control unit will um, realize this and um, yeah, it work, will work directly. Then we have a laser pointer. With this laser pointer you can make a red dot at the bottom of the garage or inside your car. So you will know how far you have to go inside the garage till the car is completely inside and you can uh, close the door safely. There is a motion it's a motion detector to switch on the light. <coughs> this is uh, sometimes very useful when you enter the carriage, maybe from <coughs> a door from the house. And then the light will go on automatically when you enter the carriage. Then we have a buzzer. This is an alarm buzzer. And it could be a buzzer if you open the wicket door as well, or if um, the door is closing, but this is uh, optional, so the alarm buzzer is set all the time, and if you ha want to have the other functions, you can set it up with the, uh, some link. Another special part is the sensor. It's a humidity sensor. This sensor always checks the humidity inside the garage. If this is increasing because you um, get in with a wet car, maybe, the door is opening just for a little bit, so the wet air can go outside and the dry air comes um, goes inside the garage and so the, the air in the garage um, is taking the humidity down and this is done automatically, so um, you have always a good climate inside your garage. Then we have a lock. The lock uh, locks up the motor, so we have a uh, bigger force if someone want to break in the garage. I mean, we have uh, the motor is um, locking the garage all the time, but if you use this lock, the motor has a force of uh, 3,000 newton to uh, lock the garage, so uh, you have much more uh, safety in this way. Then we have a memo. A memo is additional storage for uh, radio signals. So if you want to use this garage or open or maybe in a collective garage, and we have lots of handset transmitters, you can uh, use this memo to extend the memory size. And another advantage is if you have a breakdown in the carriage, you can take the defect carriage out and a new inside. And if you switch the memo from the defect to the good one, you have all the hands and transmitters on the new uh, carriage. And at the end, we have this USART interface. At the moment, we use it for a home link module or for this Delta door modules. But in future, we are developing much more of these modules so we can uh, support the new wishes uh, we or you will have uh, in future for the operator. Okay, that's it for the summary. If you have uh, questions out there, you can ask. You can write it in the question and answering uh, module or in the chat maybe. At the moment, I see nothing there. So, um, Holger, I think we can go forward. Yeah, thank you for that uh, detailed uh, summary, Stefan. Yeah, then uh, we go on. Maybe in the end of the webinar there will be some questions. Uh, so the next uh, uh, point is uh, the ceiling or wall control unit. So that's the, the PCB you can see over here. That's on the back side or on the pro version that's inside um, uh, on the wall housing. And uh, there are several uh, connections. Um, I want to show you in detail what's possible. So external push button, if you got a key switch outside or a push button inside on the wall, uh, for example, you can connect over here. By the way, if you got two or three, 
it's no problem. You just uh, connect them parallel, parallel uh, to this connection, and if uh, uh, it doesn't matter which one um, will give the impulse, uh, the door will move. Um, also, uh, we have um, a pretty new, the wall station, uh, which works from uh, hardware E, which is uh, the build date, uh, production date, uh, 7, 2017. So from yeah, middle of, of last uh, uh, end uh, year. Um, with this uh, system, it will work. If you have older systems, uh, the hardware and software uh, will not know this wall station. So please have a look. There is a silver sticker. Uh, on the PCB, which tells you the build date of the operator. And uh, yeah, what's the wall station in detail? As you can see, there are three push buttons uh, on, one, two, three. And the first one is to operate uh, your operator. Yeah, so it's just uh, open, open, stop, close, normal uh, operating. With the second one, uh, there is a LED shown on. It's for uh, uh, the illumination, so you could switch on and off your, uh, your light um, over here. And the third one uh, is to lock the operator. So for example, um, um, you go to holiday, you have to stay five seconds on this push button, and then the green LED, uh, which is always green uh, on the back uh, side, which shows green, will switch to red, and this will block the operator. So also radio, key switch, all the, the impulse uh, what are connected, uh, will not work anymore, um, and you can be sure when you are away, uh, nothing will move, your garage will be uh, closed. Uh, we suggest uh, to use it just when uh, you have a separate entrance door, so from your house that you uh, can enter to, to dislock the system when you uh, came back. And uh, also you need to know it's possible to connect the wall station and a key switch additional. So you just connect it parallel to the push button when uh, the build date is after 7, 2017 of your operator. It will be realized because it's a bus system and uh, this bus system will be uh, realized by the PCB then. And uh, yeah, it's also plug and play, uh, no, no set uh, up necessary. Uh, pretty easy because it's just two wire system and uh, yeah, could be very useful uh, in the garage for uh, operating uh, the operator. Next uh, terminal, uh, what you can see is a warning light. So it's possible to connect a, a warning light uh, if you wish. It's a 24 volt uh, DC output. Uh, it's one amp maximum. So it could be a bulb or could be LED, whatever. We got both uh, in, in our program. Um, next uh, possibility is to connect a photo cell. Uh, it could be a two wire or four wire uh, version. And uh, if you uh, wish, um, uh, you could con uh, connect instead of a photo cell if you don't got one, a push button. But the second push button is for partitional opening. So if you use partitional opening on a side sectional door, for example, then you could use it with transmitter on channel two, of course, but you could also connect this push button and use it uh, with the push button uh, inside uh, your garage uh, to open just uh, partitional the door. Um, next connection over here, it's light. Uh, this terminal is uh, for additional light. So on the carriage, uh, there are always uh, LEDs on, but if you wish to have uh, more light, there is uh, a Lumi, uh, which you can, uh, which is called Lumi, which you can connect over here. The Lumi Plus, it's also plug and play. This is for the Base Plus, and also for the Pro Plus uh, is one uh, available. Uh, you just connect it over here, and it will be on for the same time, like on the carriage. So that's three minutes in factory settings. Um, yeah, the battery um, pack, uh, it's uh, connectable over here. That's uh, for emergency, so uh, it will be charged always. And if there is no uh, current, if there is a, a power cut, uh, some, some problem, you can still operate your uh, uh, operator with a transmitter. You don't need to uh, get out of your car, use the emergency release and open by hand, though you can still 
uh, operate it uh, with a transmitter and uh, if after four hours maybe the current uh, is coming back it will charge it again uh, so this is for emergency usage it's for five six cycles uh, maybe even more so that's what we can guarantee it depends also on your door size on your door weight uh, of course um, and uh, yeah helps you to, to operate uh, the operator even if there is no uh, main power. Um, here, this is the Konex. Um, this is a small PCB, what you could uh, plug on uh, here, onto this connector. It's uh, to connect uh, push buttons. If you want to have uh, push buttons connected via wire for definite open, definite close, uh, then you could connect uh, them here to the Konex. Um, there is a possible uh, additional relay uh, to connect over here or uh, open uh, output, um, output OC. Uh, so uh, the relay is a potential free contact and here we got already 24 volts uh, output. Uh, so uh, for example, if you have an additional LED uh, outside of your garage uh, or inside, you could connect it uh, directly here or if you want to switch uh, a 230 voltage uh, bulb or whatever uh, you, you got in your garage, you could realize this with the relay. Um, so additional uh, to the LED light on the carriage, uh, your light in the garage will also uh, be on. Also uh, pretty new is the Lumi stripe. That's extra LED stripes. Um, uh, it's available in white color. So for light, it's also available with white and yellow um, LEDs. You see it uh, always on the cables. Uh, yellow uh, could be you could connect it uh, for warning light. So uh, it will be during the movement, it will warn you and the light, the white, you could switch uh, that it's on uh, for that three minutes or uh, you could switch it on uh, with a transmitter uh, on and off uh, like you need it. Uh, also available in red and in green. This is specially uh, traffic control uh, for TIGA and TIGA plus to use. So uh, in, in collective garage, uh, this would be uh, very useful. There are also four dip switches on this PCB, but the functions are uh, totally different, like on the carriage, so please don't mix them up. Uh, factory settings is also, they are uh, set to off. And uh, if you send, uh, set dip number one to off, you have uh, definite open and close for that two push buttons on the Pro Plus version. Uh, if you have it to off, you can see you have the pulse mode, so open, stop, close and the light, uh, switching the light on, off, or partitional opening if this is uh, activated. Uh, number two, this is for the relay. So if you have a relay on, it's lightning uh, function, so it will uh, switch your light. And if you switch the number two to on, it's door status indicator. So this means, for example, the door is closed, uh, relay contact is also closed, you get a feedback uh, uh, for your smart home, for your alarm system. Uh, your door is closed. Uh, you get that information out. Um, number three is for the energy saving mode. So uh, if you switch this to on, you have uh, all time uh, 24 volt DC uh, available. So that's important if you need the 24 volt uh, DC for external receiver, for example, then you have to switch this on. If not, leave it off, it will go into uh, uh, sleeping mode, uh, energy saving mode, uh, which saves you uh, uh, energy and saves you uh, money. And uh, the number four, uh, you can set if it's photo cell, if you connect a photo cell or if you connect a second push button uh, for this partitional opening system. So that's uh, so far to this small PCB. Uh, what's uh, inside the base plus housing uh, on the end of the track uh, or it's on the pro plus housing uh, uh, if it's mounted on the wall. It's uh, the same PCB, it's small, but there are a lot of uh, connections. And uh, therefore, let's come to a summary of all that uh, connections. Uh, Stefan, please. Okay, <clears throat> yes. 
Now the summary for this one, what have we at this uh, small PCB? We have a terminal for the external push button. There we can connect the key switch or several switches, or uh, we can connect the wall station. We'll have uh, special uh, functions to lock up the door and lock the radio system and the other key switches uh, as well. Then we have a terminal for the warning light. There we can connect a normal warning light with a bulb or a one with the LED lights, which is uh, more efficient and power consuming. Then we have a terminal for the photo cell. This uh, we can use if the customer wants it or if we have a door with the automatic closing, then a photo cell is uh, needed. We have a terminal for additional light. This is also a LED light. So if we connect this, we have more light in the garage <coughs> and there is really a really a bright light, uh, which is uh, much better than uh, in the past. Then we have a terminal for the battery pack. The battery pack <coughs> is if we have a power failure in the garage, then uh, the user can operate the garage opener for uh, five or six times within 12 hours. So we can operate um, the door if there is no power and if the power is coming back, uh, the electricity is charging the battery pack and uh, yes, everything can begin, uh, begin from the beginning on. Then we have a terminal for additional uh, relay or output uh, OC, which is the open collector. With this one, you can, with a relay, you can switch, for example, another light. And with the output uh, OC, you can um, wire uh, alarm system to the garage op opener. <coughs> then can the alarm system know if the door is uh, closed or not. Then we have uh, the Lumi strip, brand new here. This is also LED. With this, you can have additional light or you have can have this with the yellow LEDs for a warning light or for the collective garages you can use it as uh, traffic lights. Then we have dip switches at this PCB as well where you can uh, for example switch on or off the uh, power saving mode or other stuff where you can switch very uh, very fast with functions you need on or off. And at least we have the uh, Conex. <coughs> this is also for the alarm system or for the smart home system where you can um, control the operator with the, uh, with the wires to uh, open or close the door. Yeah. So that's it in brief for this uh, functions and, and terminals. So I think we can, can go on with okay. the rest. Yeah. Thank you, Stefan, for that summary for the, uh, the small PCB. Uh, and uh, yeah, we come now to the startup procedure. That's uh, pretty uh, comfortable, as you will see. Uh, it's pretty easy because it's a new uh, uh, procedure. It's more uh, easy proceeded. Uh, it's automatic teaching a process. Just a few p uh, pushes are necessary and uh, it's uh, automated end position detection of the door close and uh, you can choose the end position uh, of the door close so you are uh, freely here there is just one uh, end limit now uh, there is a boost of uh, close uh, pressure uh, possible when required so uh, if you really uh, uh, need to to have the door uh, fully closed uh, you can uh, do this uh, there is a uh, automated adaption of the dynamic uh, of the doorway, so you don't need to care about it teaching uh, itself. Yeah, it's a comfortable uh, startup procedure, so um, I want to explain. Uh, it's it's uh, pretty easy. It's like this. Uh, first, you um, try manually if the door uh, is moving, so use the emergency release on the operator and move it by hand, and if everything feels free, feels good, you set up the end limit uh, door open and then you uh, set the motor somewhere in the middle, somewhere between and just uh, use the emergency release uh, to lock it 
And then you could use the transmitter, which is pre-programmed to start the operator. It should first run into open direction, uh, then stop on the end limit. And then you push again, you go into door close position. And if you reach the door uh, close position, you are satisfied with that position. You just confirm it once more with your transmitter. And that's it. The rest of the operator will teach in its force, its running time uh, by, by himself, by itself. And uh, after it's finished, it uh, will not flash anymore uh, the light. Uh, it will be constantly on and uh, run into door open position and stay there so you know uh, uh, commissioning is, is done. Um, now um, it's like this after uh, this is done. Um, there is uh, a possibility we come to uh, diagnosis, we come to service. Uh, I was talking before about the SOM link. The SOM link, uh, maybe not all of you know what the SOM link so this is why I want to uh, explain it um, here to you. It's a service tool for adjusting and viewing a parameter uh, settings of the drive uh, by the technician. So it's for technician, it's not for end user. Uh, I want to uh, mark on, on this uh, point. And uh, it's like this, uh, it's a, a small tool. You have to plug it into a socket. It needs power, uh, of course, uh, to, to work. And uh, then uh, the construction uh, is like this. There is an integrated Wi-Fi uh, module uh, in this uh, system. And uh, there is an integrated web server uh, as well. And you may connect uh, with your smartphone, tablet, notebook, I mean, whatever you've got. Uh, you just need a Wi-Fi uh, module uh, integrated uh, into your system to this uh, SOM link. Uh, by the way, there is no uh, internet, no uh, access to the web, uh, World Wide Web necessary. And uh, so you can do this on site, wherever you are, if it's a collective garage, uh, no problem. And uh, the system, uh, the SOM link is a translator from Wi-Fi to SOMA radio system. This is working uh, with SOM log 2 with our uh, radio system to the operator. And uh, what are the functions? So it's possible to change uh, the drive parameter. So for example, you can adapt the soft run. Uh, if the soft run is uh, uh, too, too late, for example, you can make a longer soft run that the door is, is closing smoothly. Uh, it's a diagnosis help. So uh, there are um, error files uh, inside and you could read out uh, them and have a look what, what was the last uh, errors. That helps you especially for um, errors which are not all time, which uh, are just sometimes there. And uh, if you are on site, uh, you can't uh, find that error, so that will be helpful. Uh, you can have a data backup, so that means all the data, what's on the operator, you could download uh, to the SOM link, and later on you could download from the SOM link this data to your laptop, for example. You could have a, a detailed look in the office uh, to this data to analyze uh, it, or you could send it uh, to us, to SOMAR, uh, if you are not sure. And also it's a help. Uh, during installation, so it's not a must-have, but uh, I can recommend uh, uh, you this tool because it helps you a lot of uh, settings uh, to, to uh, do them pretty easy. And uh, for example, you could, uh, for the installation, you could code in more transmitter. You could do this everything uh, downstairs. Uh, if the garage is uh, a big door, it's three meters up. Normally, you need to climb on a ladder, need to go up, press the radio button uh, to code in transmitter. You could do all this uh, from uh, uh, from the ground, from the ground floor, uh, with a SOM link that's possible. And um, I would like to uh, let you know on our homepage on SOMAR.eu, there's a demo version uh, available. And you could have a look to this, uh, all the functions. So there are many functions uh, which you could set. Uh, you see it's for garage door, uh, swing gate operator. Later on, uh, it will be for sliding gate, industrial door operator. So our development is working that it's uh, for more operator, more and more uh, operator uh, uh, competitive.
compatible. Uh, you need to know all the operators which use SOMLOG2. So that's in the moment uh, Twist UG, Twist AM, Base Plus, Pro Plus, uh, Tiga, Tiga Plus, plus uh, all this uh, operator. You could already use SOMLINK, and uh, in the future uh, it will be more and more. Okay, so that's uh, just for uh, small information for the SOMLINK. Uh, by the way, for the SOMLINK, we have separate uh, webinar where you can get detailed uh, information, how to use it, uh, what's possible to set up. So if you're interested, have a look on our homepage uh, when there is the next um, webinar for SOMLINK and uh, feel free to join. We come now to a, a summary, the last uh, summary. So, uh, Stefan, please uh, let us know. Okay, <clears throat> so at the end, what have we? Uh, we have the easy commissioning. The control unit is very intelligent, so you need only to um, give the information about the end positions to the control unit, and then the forces are uh, programmed automatically. So, this is very, um, yeah, very easy to do. Then we have a service tool called SOMLINK. With this service tool, you're able to adjust and key parameters of the operator. You can use either a smartphone or a tablet or a notebook with a Wi-Fi adapter and uh, connect with the SOMLINK via a uh, summer radio system to any, any operator with the new uh, radio system. And then you can set up the operators how you uh, want and need it. Um, this is only for technicians. In, uh, in a short time period, we will offer a new system where you can operate your uh, garage or opener by a mobile phone. But at the moment, the summoning tool is only for the uh, service technicians. Yes, now I think we are at the end of our webinar. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. So many thanks for your attention. And uh, yeah, if you have any uh, question, um, uh, we could clarify them now. So please don't hesitate. Uh, don't just ask if, if there is anything you'd like to know. There are no questions. We say uh, thank you to all our participants. So for today, we are at the end of our webinar. Thanks again, and maybe we meet you another time in a webinar from uh, Somos Company. Thank you and goodbye.